You're listening to a Listen Frederick podcast. Local podcast, live radio. It's Listen Frederick. And now, your host of Steeples and People's podcast to tell you about all things Frederick County, Maryland. Here's Mark and Terry Meriday. Changes, origination, and historical site that has transcended throughout its origination into one of the best kept secrets, not only in Emmitsburg, but in all of Frederick County and the surrounding areas. The Staples and People's podcast is honored to have had the fortunate opportunity to not only interview one, two, or three, but five of the most instrumental individuals who make the Carriage House Inn the gem that it is today. We dip into the transformation through the ages and the variety of backgrounds of the management team, including the executive chef. We discuss the menu for both lunch and dinner, along with some of the favorites and must-tries. We talk about the catering options outside of the building and all the great things that happen in the events area. If this doesn't prime you up to listen, I'm not sure what exactly will. So enjoy this one. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Steeples and Peoples podcast. Uh, I'm Mark Meriday, here with my lovely co-host, uh, Terry Meriday. Yes, we are related. In fact, she's my bride for several years. We celebrated our anniversary just recently, and it was so busy, we couldn't even... Uh, we, like, almost forgot. We were, we've been yeah, married 22 years. It, it was pretty crazy, so. but, you know, it, it was a good thing. We had fun. Uh, our son kind of takes up all our time now, because our three daughters are are much older. But anyway, Terry, tell them where we are today. This is very exciting. Today we're at the Carriage House Inn on South Seton Ave in Emmitsburg, and we have five people that are going to tell us all things Carriage House. So we have Teresa Vaughn, the din- dining room extraordinaire, Christy Schreiner, she's for marketing and sales, Terry Bowser, sales and catering, and we are fortunate to have the actual owner, Sharon Hans, and Chef Jed Pearson. So we, we really get to have a plethora of background uh, with this place. Okay, let's start with Jed. Can you tell us a little bit um, about you, where you were born and raised, maybe how you got into being a chef, or if you had a, maybe a career before this? Yeah, so I am from Amelia Island, Florida, mm-hmm. and um, growing up, I've lived on the beach my whole life, Jacksonville uh, Beach. Uh, May Island is 30 miles north of Jacksonville Mm -hmm. and um, you know so living on the beach uh, we grow up fishing every day yeah uh, on the beach so trout redfish uh, drum snapper grouper and of course you know we kept it so we'd have to clean it and cook it and uh, growing up I was always told how great of a cook I was and I, I didn't take it for granted but you know, growing up, just hearing that, I'm like, you know, maybe I do have a talent. So in 2008, uh, before 2008, I worked uh, industrial uh, factories, and uh, there was a big layoff. It was hard to get jobs around then. So I thought about uh, cooking. I'm like, food's never going to go nowhere. Um, Mm -hmm. So I decided to start cooking. Um, I started out in a small hotel, and then I realized what I was missing. Um, all the great chefs I worked with were so advanced and I wondered how they got there and they told me I need to go to culinary school uh, to kind of speed the process up. So I went to First Coast Technical College in St. Augustine, uh, Florida. Um, and then from there, as soon as I got in school, I entered the ACF competitions and excelled, won silver medals, bronze medals. Nice. Um, and from there, um, I went to sous chef uh, at the Ritz Carlton of May Island, um, and I made my way. I took a demotion for a cook job at Salt, um, best restaurant in Florida. Um, so I worked there for about a year, and then took a, a executive sous chef job at One Ocean Resort and Spa. Uh, and then from there, I took a another job that I worked there two years, and then went to Casa Monica Resort and Spa back to St. Augustine. So I worked at all the resort and spas in Northeast Florida. Um, and then at Casa Monica, COVID hit. Um, 
So that was a six year span of experience in the um, restaurant and spas. And when COVID hit, of course, we were all furloughed um, and we opened a small business uh, furniture store just to get by through COVID. And then I got a call from uh, colleagues uh, saying, you know, they needed me here. Um, and I traveled up the East Coast um, and I landed in Gettysburg, uh, Wyndham. Um, huge operation, uh, $10 million a year, skeleton crew coming out of COVID. And that's where I actually met Miss Terry. Um, I met her there and then I was uh, fortunate enough to meet Dana and Nancy, which have been here, uh, Dana's been here 25 you know, plus years. Um, and then I met Nancy. Nancy's been here about five years. And they were on the off season, so they helped me get through a season at the Wyndham. And they called me about six months later and said, hey, there's an opportunity here. And I started thinking, like, if they've been here that long, I wanted to see what was so special and why they've yeah. been here and uh, more of job security. And uh, so I decided to take the job um, after interviewing with Miss Sharon um, and actually Miss Terry. Um, had a great reference. Jed, you're a far cry from Florida here, though. Oh, yeah. yeah I just, crazy. I was play? saying, I, if I was in Florida, I'd probably stay in Florida to work. But I get it. Oh, yeah. I get it. No question about it. Yeah, we're glad he didn't. Yeah. Oh, no. I, I, I'm very glad he didn't. Yeah, yeah, very sure. glad he didn't. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next. <laughs> so I have actually um, been working here for 28 years. Wow. Um, I started as a server out of high school um, and then became dining room manager, um, got married here. Actually upstairs in the ballroom Ooh. is our wedding reception um, 20 years ago. Um, and then I have moved into sales and, and marketing and, and catering and uh, the whole plethora of everything that we have to offer here at the Carriage House. So That's um, fantastic. Yeah, that says yeah. a lot. It does. I love going into businesses, and you've had people there for a long time. It says a lot. You know, of course, you have some turnover as well, but of course, it, it, when you see that, it's it, we know it's good. Yeah, there's a solid base of family, oh, yeah. dysfunctional or not. You know, there is a family. <laughs> oh yeah, there's so. dysfunction in every family, isn't there? <laughs> That's right. Let me tell you about my kids. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that's another show. Terry, hi, I'm Terry Bowser, and I have been with. The, uh, the company itself since 1982. Um, it hasn't always been Carriage House. It was Gentleman Jim's before that. And Gentleman Jim's had a couple of restaurants and still do in um, Gaithersburg. In yeah. Gaithersburg. Used to go there after yeah. I coached at Watkins Mill. We'd See? go there post game. Yes, Watkins Mill, absolutely. So that's where I met my husband, who has been with the company for 51 years. Wow. The longest standing wow. member of this company. And he is still here at Carriage House today. And uh, so we actually opened up the restaurant in 1982 as Gentleman Jim's and did a lot of renovations. It had been restaurants. This building had been restaurants before that, and but it needed a lot of a lot of help. And um, and then shortly after that, I think 1990. What year is that, Christy? Maybe 1995. It became Carriage House. Somewhere along that way, I'm not really quite sure when it became Carriage House, kind of melted in one view together. Uh -huh. um, yeah. They stepped up on their menu. It was, as Gentleman Jim's, it was known for its amazing pizza. Uh, voted number one in the Washington metropolitan area in 1982, 83, and 84. So uh, it then became more of a casual fine dining. Uh, crab cakes became the, the, the oh, thing. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's my history with, uh, with the restaurant. Interesting. Christy. Teresa. Or Teresa. I mixed up <laughs> Teresa and Christy. It's, it's not the first time that's Darn happened. It. I should it's have wrote the names like in a circle. It's okay. It's <laughs> it's it's kind of funny. I've um I've been here since two thousand and eighteen. But I've been a customer. Oh, I got married in two thousand and five, so we started dating in 1999, so we've, I've been a customer since about that long. I used to be a store manager for Walmart. Um, Walmart was overwhelming. This was my place I came mm -hmm. to eat. I was a regular. Christy was always here. Um, that's how I got to get my relationship started with Christy 
was because she was always the host and was the giggling one on the floor and knew everything and she had different things going on and she knew us by name she knew what we liked to eat she knew how we liked to uh, dine so we would come for the full scale meal um, I had left uh, Walmart and was trying to figure out what I wanted to do I didn't want to manage anymore because um, Walmart is a total it's not too far off from re retail and restaurants are not far off for one another mm -hmm. um, you still need to do all your budgeting and it's just people um, I came in one afternoon uh, to have lunch with my mother and my daughter and Tina who also has been in this restaurant for 25 plus years she's a server um, heard me talking to my mom about how disgruntled I was with my job and what I was doing and walks up to me and puts an application down in front of me and says we're hiring a dining room manager and um, I think Christy came out not too long after that and we scheduled an interview mm -hmm. I do believe so here I am uh, with five six years later five I don't even know anymore you're so, the young pup huh I'm the young pup but I oh. feel like I, I feel like I've known everyone my whole life here though um, this is a this is just a great place we have our ups and our downs but I love interacting with people and obviously when you guys walked in the door the other day you and I hit it off right off yeah, the bat. Yeah. So, I try to bring the energy like I said yes. so um, that's what I that's what I like to bring to the table here with uh, carriage house my wife so, tells me I'm like Mary Poppins in the morning see I oh, teach I so teach high school and I got to deal with high school kids who are like this every day <laughs> it's seven o'clock in the morning so I got to bring the energy he yeah. brought the energy in and he, I said how are you doing he says I'm living the dream and that's my comment and so I looked right at him and I said and thanks for being in it <laughs> yeah, that was actually so let me see Jed chef Christy Marketing and no, 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 no. Marketing. marketing. We're gonna go there. Uh, uh, Terry, T yes, Terry, Terry with a Y, easy. with a Y. Uh, catering. Dining room. I know your dining room. Uh, Teresa. Yeah. Okay, Teresa, <laughs> dining room. All right. Just, just for my own personal. You're good. You know, okay. you know what I do to to remember people's names? I uh, give them nicknames. And that's how I stay connected, uh -oh. like with all my kids. <laughs> What's my name? No, I mean just. Misty I, I mean, I, I, I get. I have 150 kids I teach, and I my goal every day, or my goal every year, every semester, I should say, is to learn their names as quickly as possible. Because, I mean, like some teachers still don't know their kids. They'll be like, "Hey, hey you," and I'm like, "No, that's not how well, you do I'll it." I'll tell you, as a person who does not always know their students' names anymore, it's age doesn't help. <laughs> that's on you, dog. I used to know all of them. <laughs> all right, so. Which one of you, hey, Miss Sharon? Oh, oh no, she's not here. Sharon. Yeah. Which one of you can tell <laughs> us some fault. history about this building? Because I know this thing is an ama has this an amazing one. history. Who knows some history about this building? Anybody? Well, we all know yeah. a little bit. We all have bits and pieces. Christine, you want to start and I'll jump in where I can? Certainly. Yeah, so 1857 building age. Um, so, you know, right there it has a lot of, you know, lots of different stories. Um, definitely was a. Uh, bus depot um, it was a broom factory um, it, I always found it very interesting it was a tomato fan, a tomato cannering factory um, for the seminary the seminary had, grew the tomatoes um, here in Mount St. Mary's so close um, and then it was a tomato uh, canning factory here um, and then turn of the century it did become you know many different restaurants um, and then it was a hotel upstairs in the ballroom um, yeah so it really has a different flavor to it that's so interesting to me yeah, you know. absolutely. Yeah. It has its own energy, definitely. I think the first <laughs> restaurant was 1953, the White House. And, um, and then it became known as Booker's, which was the local bar hangout for the two colleges at the time. Mm -hmm. There was St. Catharines, which was an all-girls college, and oh, then there was Mount St. Mary's, which at the time was an all-boys college. And they were just oh, a few convenient. blocks away. Well, that's some great information. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. That's like Notre Dame. There's some, there's some <laughs> all-girls college. I forgot what it was called. Yeah. Oh, right. Today, uh, cater still to the alumni and a different... Uh, when uh, Jed and I were at the Wyndham, actually, uh, last year, we catered to the uh, St. Catharines all-girls school. Uh, they were celebrating uh, 
55 year um, anniversary uh, at that time. And, uh, and that's where I found out all kinds of interesting little tidbits about this building back in, you know, back in that time. Interesting tidbit about me. I graduated from college with a hotel restaurant management degree, and my first official job was working for uh, Marriott Corporation at an all-girls Catholic college. I was the food service director, so uh, yeah, I only lasted. With a year. Their sparking personality. I'm sure that was uh, really it, awesome. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. I was 21. <laughs> right. Okay. So okay. at an all-girls right. all Catholic. Uh, yeah. We still have guests come in and ask about Bookers and oh, reminisce wow. about when they came here and visited Bookers and. We have a, a postcards around, so we'll show them the pictures of the building. It's neat to hear the stories. Yeah. About Who's that. the most famous guest that's ever come through here? Christine. President Clinton. Mm. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I, guess, I guess that would be. And his wife. <laughs> well, we uh, and his family, they were staying at, uh, at Camp David. Camp David? Sure. Yeah, Thanksgiving weekend. Oh, wow. um, and they made a reservation. Um, on a Saturday night, seven o'clock, for like 25 people. Wow. Um, in this room is where we had them. Um, and then maybe a few hours uh, prior to the reservation, uh, Secret Service showed up with their oh. business cards and said, your reservation tonight is President Clinton and, and family. They family. Wow. So, no, uh, oh yes, yeah, they well, did, they, they did. did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, that's really, really So, cool. and then just then, they started coming in and filing and surrounding the building. Oh. Um, they brought in birthday cakes because they were celebrating that night. So they guarded, oh, they had so two cool. um, guarding the cake. Um, there was a gentleman in the kitchen um, watching many hours prior to their dinner to make sure that there was nothing contaminating or, wow. yeah. Interesting. So. Any other presidents or anybody like Not that? Not yet. <laughs> I have one. I have one. I have one. <laughs> Teresa, break it down. So we had a, um, we had a rehearsal dinner here and one of the guests was oh. Serena Williams and her oh. husband. Oh. We had to be really quiet about that when we weren't allowed to say she was coming in. They had Secret Service in the front, parked right in the front of the door, as a matter of fact. I remember that, yeah. but uh, yes, that was um, that was very interesting. Was she a lovely person? She was very quiet. Her, she was very quiet. Um, she, uh, her husband did most of the talking, but she was very quiet. Um, very respectful, very quiet, but it was a very she interesting. Didn't want to take the spotlight off the, of the, the couple. The, you know, it, it, well, she was her, her wedding party. Her, and oh. They were married the next day at Liberty Mountain, so they had the rehearsal dinner here at Carriage House, yeah. and then they were married at Liberty Mountain. And it was secret and and very quiet. We we didn't get to know that she was coming until actually two weeks before the wedding, and um, and I was at Liberty Mountain at that time. And uh, her favorite part was sitting around after the wedding at the fire pit, toasting marshmallows and just being with her friends and just being normal. And, and we all afforded her that, you know, by not great. asking for autographs and sure. not uh, yeah, yeah, sure. that's hard. bothering her. <laughs> right, yeah. You know, but again, we all knew amazing. that you know, it needed to be a special weekend for her. I always say, man, they got to get up in the morning, put on their clothes just like we do, wash their face, hopefully brush their teeth, yeah. you know, and get about their day just like we do. They just approach it from a different angle. Uh, now you can say that you've had steeples and peoples here. So you could, we could be number three on the list. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, talk a little bit about that lunch menu, types of foods, drinks you offer, uh, even some, some specials you might offer at lunch and dinner. Yeah, so um, right now we serve an all-day menu, um, so everybody can come in and enjoy, you know, that special sandwich they want at night. Or, and what I've learned through COVID, we kind of adjusted the menu from where we were to after COVID, of course. Yeah. Um, but we are going to a lunch and dinner menu. Oh. So the the menu you see right now is kind of an all-day menu. Mm -hmm. um, and it's got signature sandwiches we've served for years. Um, it's got the crab cake we've served for uh, 20 plus years. It's got the uh, carriage house crab dip we've served for over 20 years. Um, and we, we serve quite a bit of seafood. Uh, we're gonna incorporate a lot more seafood, uh, a lot more fish. Uh, people, they love fish. We're in Maryland. Yeah. Um, not so far you know, from the coast, but mm -hmm. Um, we're gonna we do all fresh here um, we have probably 
25 people in the kitchen. So we're wow. very fortunate to have such a big crew here. A lot of places are struggling with hiring, mm -hmm. but that tells you a little bit about the place uh, and the dedication the owner and the managers give to um, the cooks and the servers. And um, I would say 60 to 70% of the people have been here five plus years. Wow. Um, so you we have people to, that know what they're doing. In the kitchen, I can't believe 25 people. Well, you can make it happen. Not all in one day. Not one day. In one hour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess you have to divide it. Shift and yeah, there's eight to ten people catering yeah. right. at all times. Okay. What's your signature sandwich? If I came in here and I, I've never had a meal here, mm -hmm. and I want to get a lunch sandwich. <laughs> what's your signature sandwich? Yeah, signature sandwich. I would have to say um, I've been here pushing a year. Uh, maybe. Yeah, they can tell you something different, but I think the crab cake sandwich That's is it. the yeah. main seller. That is it's it. pretty much Maryland, isn't it, you guys? We have yeah, people that come from Baltimore who say that they come here to eat the crab cake wow. sandwich mm -hmm. be, and not there. You know, I mean, sure. they're right on the water, and wow. so they come here. The Reuben's not far behind it. Though. I was yeah. just about the really? Reuben's. Your favorite Reuben is, is um, yeah. my cousin oh. just came here for the Reuben is that sandwich. Right? Yep, he came for dinner and... <laughs> he helicoptered in from Elizabeth Town. Oh, I'm PA. I, <laughs> yeah, I know where that is. Yeah. You're known for your what, cream of crab soup. At, mm -hmm. at here, is that one of your? Is that your it most popular selling yes. soup? Yes. It's been here for at least twenty five years. Yeah. It used to start. Uh, it began as a soup of the day, and we have a soup du jour, of course, with a couple of staples on the menu. Um, and then people would be greeting me at the door. Do you have your cream of crab soup today? Yeah. Like it was, <laughs> it was just part it's of. Not, is it here or is it not? Then it just became that popular, and it stayed. What I thought was kind of interesting is when we came out uh, to to have a meal, and we first met you. Um, the lady who was a lovely hostess uh, asked us if we had a reservation, and it was like mm -hmm. eleven something in the morning. Like I was like, well, a well, reservation. Like, no, we just kind of popped in, like, because yeah, wanted to try it, and we were in the area because we hadn't been here. Right. And fortunately, so, there 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 were a lot of people here, but fortunately, there were tables, and we were set, and we had a great lunch. Good. So you have all these staple items you keep saying on, on the menu for 20 years, on the menu for, for many, many years. But I know that you do change the menu once in a while. You're like adding items. Mm -hmm. So can you tell me the process about that? Maybe something coming up? Yeah. Um, so for me, um, I always go by insight from the servers and managers mm -hmm. first. And then we have to test uh, the uh, comments and you know what people want so if they come to me and say hey people's been requested and mm -hmm. lamb we'll run a special for lamb or uh, seafood pasta or lobster we'll always test that um, and the little bit of time I've been here we've tested that and our specials sell out every every night we sell out we, we don't carry over um, I can't seem to order enough specials uh, when we do run the specials so that tells us you know people are coming here to see what we have different see what we have uh, for the feature they're coming by for the chef features and the fresh catch features uh, we typically do two features um, a day um, and we always have a fresh catch it can be anything from uh, soft shell crab to swordfish monkfish I have monkfish coming in today uh, prawns, um, lobster. Um, so it, it changes. We get so whatever's in season as well. Um, if you ever need taste testers before you put things on the menu, Mark and I are just a hop skip. We, we can bring our. You need to tell them about your very tomahawk steak. It's oh, oh, yeah. the most yeah. recent yeah. special yeah. that we, we can't keep in. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so the, the tomahawk. Um, we tried it for um, Father's Day because Father's, of course, you know, this big steak. massive steak. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, you know, it's got the big 24-inch uh, bone. It's a two-pound ribeye, 32 ounces uh, ribeye. So we did kind of a split dinner um, for, we did a surf and turf. So you'd get four big prawns, your uh, mashed potatoes, asparagus, and then, of course, the show plate, this great big massive ribeye. And when you walk by and people see this display, 
for this massive ribeye. They're like, what is that? And yeah. of course, the <laughs> husband's like, maybe it. I want that. You know, yeah. it, it just it, it just spreads. I mean, um, and so they're hard to hold on to, but uh, we're we're going to run that periodically. Um, I could see your son eating that entire <laughs> meal that you described. He's 13, yeah, he's 13. and he's growing. Yeah, he, yeah, he's a dump truck. Oh, yeah. Mm. And then it's, it's a dinner for three, uh, really, because the bone, it, if you have a dog, that is a there you go. that is a That's dog treat. Bone. That is a twenty four inch bone. by one inch bone. They're they're not gonna chew in one day. No. Um, <laughs> so you got a dinner for three. <laughs> you think Lucy would get into that? Man's bone? best friend. <laughs> not, not only that, chef's presentation. The chefs has every the presentation of office features are just spectacular. I like to look at. I like to come out when we're putting a special out and see just the expression of the customer's face when you're placing that in front of them. Yeah. So uh, it is crucial. Yeah. I agree. So That's one of the things I learned when I was oh, in yeah. school. Yeah. I've noticed your your lunch time and dinner times. You know, a little different service. You know, your your dinner. They're coming here for a special occasion. They want to be blown away. Um, and your lunch does too. But you know, at night we tested it. Um, yeah, and it's, sure. that's what they want. They, mm -hmm. they want a nice, beautiful quality, you know, the whole package. Um, a lot of places can't quite figure out, you know, what's more important. Is it the quality? Is it the presentation? And, and it's, it's a mix of it. Service, especially service is the first thing. You definitely were made to do what you're doing. No, Just listening to you talk. <clears throat> Miss Sharon, I want to ask you a question. Okay, thank thank we you. We got Sharon back. Yeah. Sharon, hey, sorry. pants. Do you oh, don't be sorry. You, no, you have, you're you busy have, place. A, yeah, the way we understand. I get it. Um, why did you decide to get into the restaurant business? And what was your vision when you first got this place? Well, I, I've been here since 1994 and I married the owner and um, <laughs> he passed away. Business now and keep trying to keep his vision in, in, my, in my heart. Right. When he, he to go. when he had opened the play or when he had got it, like were you together when he decided no, to? No, okay, no. so did you embrace it right away? Like was that part of the relationship? I mean, it, oh, yes. it, because that this is a huge commitment. I get it. You know, yes. being in the business. For I mean, I was in it for almost twenty years or some something as wow. from the time I was a kid till the time I said no more. And um, <laughs> I, I mean, I I get I get it. It is a commitment to be in the restaurant business, you know. So well, kudos to you. I Thank mean, you. you're doing a wonderful job. Everybody here is. Yeah. You're you're anywhere you go, you see either advertising or hear people, you know, chattering about. Oh, have you been to Carriage House out in Emmitsburg? Yeah. Now we can actually. Yeah, yeah, Emmitsburg is not far from from like the city of Frederick too. We got Thurmont, and you're close to Gettysburg, really. I mean, enough. Yeah, but there's plenty to do up county or yeah. just just across the line in, in Gettysburg yeah. for us people to but stop by. And we get quite a few customers that meet in the middle here. Sure. Oh, I, I just want to move that a little bit there. Mm -hmm. But uh, they'll if you're coming from an hour from upstate Pennsylvania from the whole way down to Virginia, they'll sure. meet. They'll Great come meet place here. To meet, yeah. It, it, yeah, in between, an sure. Circumference, yes. Yeah. Your you parents would love this. My parents, yeah, my parents would love this. We'll have to when they come down. They live in upstate New York, and we usually have a nice family meal when they visit around the holidays, because we we don't get together for Thanksgiving and Christmas, and my parents' anniversary, and like there's all these holidays. So we we have like one family dinner. My brother's in Virginia, so our next one will be here at the Carriage House. I I'll send my secret that. service out early. Send so. your secret <laughs> service out. I'll get your reservation. You tell me about the catering business. I think that's probably as popular as the restaurant or yeah. busy on the weekends. Absolutely, and yes. What a lot of people uh, are just finding out or have known for many years um, is that Carriage House also is a catering company. So everything we do in-house and more, we load up in trucks and we head out every weekend in many different directions. Um, we go to uh, barns for weddings mm -hmm. and uh, uh, just people, backyards for anniversary parties. So our companies and businesses who are throwing a, 
a summer party or, or whatever along the way. Uh, some of the places that we visit um, most weekends are like Ostertag Vista and Zigbone, Glen Ellen, Bluebird, Delaney. So these are all well-known uh, wedding venues in, uh, in our area within a 20, 25 mile radius hmm. that we, uh, we frequent. And pretty much every weekend you can find us at one or two. Uh, coming up in the next week or so, we are doing two at the same time. So mm -hmm. we, we divide and conquer. And uh, I'm excited because Chef's going to, we don't get him out of the, this kitchen very often. He's going to be coming on a catering with me yes. in a couple of weeks. So to see what the, the other half does as well. So we have a catering menu that folks look at. We also cater in-house as well. We have a beautiful ballroom upstairs, the Joanne's Ballroom. So we do weddings. We just did a gorgeous wedding up there just a few weeks ago. And, um, and birthday parties and so forth and so on. It seats 120 to 150, depending on if you want a dance floor or not. Yeah. And, uh, Cutting some rug. Yeah, yeah. I just thought of a great, I just thought of that when you're mentioning uh, we could do a Steeples and People's Wedding Venue Week. Oh, that's a good you idea. Know what I mean? Yeah. Like we've done a lot of, we've interviewed a lot of. Uh, wineries is, is a popular mm -hmm. place in, in different places. Yeah, we, we did at a Linganore Winery actually yeah. uh, three times this coming up month. Wow. Yes, absolutely. We've done a, we did a, we do some special weeks where it's five day every day. There's something. We did so nonprofit week. We did food a truck nonprofit week. week was our first one, and we just did food truck week. So maybe I, in the yeah, fall. Yeah, wow. Who is Joanne? So Joanne is Jim Hans's her. Her dear departed husband, his first wife. Oh, so okay. Joanne and Jim used to come up here to this area. He has a sister that lives in this area. And so they would come up here to visit, and they just loved the area. They just, it was a weekend drive for them. They just loved the area. They loved going to the Cozy for, uh, you know, for, for dinner. And uh, they came by this building and noticed it was for sale. And prayed about it, thought about it, and, mm -hmm. and became the second location. Again, he was the owner of Gentleman Jim's in, in uh, Rockville okay. uh, since 1972. And so this became really their 10th year anniversary in 1982 when they purchased this building as a second location. It was called Gentleman Jim's 2, T-O-O. -O. Oh, cute. And, uh, mm -hmm. and so that's how that came about and Joanne uh, passed away in 1996 uh, and she uh, um, the ballroom was re uh, dedicated and uh, refurbished and uh, named for her oh that's wonderful yeah I think we haven't seen that yet we're gonna have to pop up there yeah we're gonna Miss Sharon is it okay we if we a get tour. a tour oh absolutely <laughs> <laughs> uh, the cozy inn not to go mm -hmm. off subject here we're talking about you guys but is that still open don't believe I don't think no, so. They no. Closed no. Out. They yeah. had, in fa and it's not the building's not even there anymore. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's a it's, it's a, a uh, car, car dealership. Car dealership. I thought oh, that was no. car yeah. in Thermont. Yeah. yeah they, I went to prom with the cozy was Did you? Oh. <laughs> At the car dealership? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Very well known in this area. I mean, uh, I grew up in Bethesda, uh, you know, in Montgomery County uh -huh. and we always knew that, you know, it was a special that's how my Location parents found this place. Oh. Mm -hmm. That was the place where all the presidents went to. They all okay. Went to yeah, because our friend was trying to say here, and I'm like, the bottom of the Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So, what types of things do you do in the community? Because, I, like I said, I know you're out there in the community, you're on the floor. Uh, do you have any <laughs> partnerships, collaborations? You know, what, who do you work with? So, I mean, we're so lucky to have Mount St. Mary's right here, mm -hmm. you know. So the university is, is huge for us. Um, we collaborate uh, a lot on the ma Mount Athletic side. Mm -hmm. uh, we host Mount Club in the, in the winter time, and and uh, we have lots of relationships with all the different D1 teams. Yeah, uh, you know, which is pretty cool. Uh, and, and every year, I feel like we're we're adding another team to our nice. relationships. Um, so it's, it's pretty neat. Um, and then of course they come in here. You know, all of the. Um, Staff from the from the mount come for lunch and you know, meet oh, families. That's business. a huge collaboration. Oh, absolutely! This is like a big college week. Yeah. Nice oh. yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're, you're <laughs> Graduation. You're on double duty. That's yeah. certainly that week. Um, 
the town of Emmitsburg here, they are just building every year. And uh, so it's neat to, to be part of them, too. And we're, we're cooking their hot dogs for their pool parties in the nice. summertime. We've been doing that for years. Well, that's um, they drop off their hot dogs, and we bring it to them ready to go. Hot go from kids hot dogs party. To cake. Are these boiled right, or grilled? Uh, oh, grilled every, all day, right? Okay. No. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so it's hundreds and hundreds of hot dogs and the kids oh, they have this pool party. Gosh. So it's it's fun. That's fun. You know, uh, first night out will be coming up in August and we'll 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 do things like that with them. Um, when they did the wayside ex, ex, uh, exhibits yeah. right out front, you know, with our, all of our history, um, they just established a walking tour of Emmitsburg. So you can start and there's a pamphlet start from one um, destination to the next and do a whole walking tour in Emmitsburg. Oh, so things like that being involved is, is really neat. Excellent. So I, we pick up quite Pardon? a few uh, students too for yeah, summer think, jobs, yeah. yes. 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 even jobs yes. during. So yes. and that's servers, dishwashers, cooks, um, and we have quite a few here now. Do you feel like when you think is the most busy time of the year? Like, because I know you said you hire students <laughs> and stuff like that over the summer, but like, when do you have a busier time of the year? I know you're a steady flow, but you know, have you experienced spring a and fall. spring and fall? Spring and fall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, everybody's ready to get out in the spring, right? Um, and then in that fall, that September, October. Oh, it's just beautiful just, around here. It is so beautiful. Yeah. Um, I heard <laughs> we're yeah. always so busy <laughs> because of that and all the weddings. It's top Most notch wedding season. In the in the fall. In the fall. September, yeah. October, October, October. And Teresa's book is full too. That's something people don't see when they come in to eat here. What's going on back here? Because when you're in season for wedding season and you're busy in here, we still have to cook for 200 people, 150 people back here, plus three other corporate events. Um, so the, the kitchen back there is very busy uh, while all this is going on. Um, Do you, you manage know. it as well as, you know, as the chef? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I'm a hands-on chef. Um, growing up, it was, I was always, you know, I, I didn't like the chefs because you never saw them. Yeah, and I never realized what the responsibility of a chef was until I took that role. Yeah, um, and it's menu planning, and you're always planning, always involved with the sales part, growing, and but here is a little different, you know, because it's such a big operation. Um, you're doing two businesses in one, um, unless you had you know six, seven managers. Um, which you know we're we're pushing toward that goal, mm-hmm. but you know it's especially coming out we're easing out of COVID, so we're busier and busier. You have to manage. Yeah, um, it's got to be a hands-on and um, the executive role. So. I, I'll tell you what, that hot dog day must be a tough one on you. I forgot to ask about the piano. I believe something special goes on with that in the weekends. Do we have a pianist that comes out still? We have Friday night, Saturday, Friday night, Saturday, Saturday night, night. Saturday. Um, right in the dining room. Right in the dining room, five o'clock. Um, and they play till we close, oh, wow. and then um, Sally comes in on Sundays um, to because she just likes to play. So Sally comes in Sundays. Oh, so a- we give her a meal, and she plays for tips. And she's got people that come to see her. Sometimes Bonnie nice. does Sundays too. It's not always a guarantee on Sundays, sure. but. She's been here just about every Sunday. So. Sharon, do you have a favorite song that they play on that piano? Uh, oh, yes. Be a Oh. Yeah. How great long movie has the too. pianist been coming? You have the same one, or do you rotate forever 19, and ever? 90, no, we had a, no. the pianist actually who donated that piano oh. um, was our first pianist, Linda Duffy. Mm-hmm. And she passed away. Uh, when did she start? 1995? Mm-hmm. Somewhere in there. Uh, so. It's been a long time. Yes. That's it's a great. favorite tradition, you know. People come with their requests or they're celebrating their anniversary and then oh, they'll ask yeah, to, to play their nice wedding place. song. Oh. Right. And yeah. it's just neat. Bo- Bonnie yeah. will, so Bonnie and Sally both have iPads. It's not like a flip of a page. So sure. they alternate between Bonnie and Sally and, uh, Bonnie has playlists for customers, and if she sees that customer coming in the oh door and they sit down, she'll make sure she plays a couple songs from that she knows that they've requested. So she tries to keep a good relationship oh, with the customer. Right there. That's mm-hmm. what com- keeps them coming I wonder if she could play in her Sandman when I come in. <laughs> she probably could. Bonnie is very verse. Very verse. All right. We're actually, um, you know, talking about the patio now. We have a patio. Um, hmm. 
you can visit. And we're we're trying to bring something together as far as like acoustic or some kind of music out here. Uh, so that's developing. I definitely encourage you to come by and check the patio out. Enjoy a. Uh, enjoy your meal that's my favorite thing sitting outside having a meal mm-hmm. i know when we when we travel I, I like you know even when i go to downtown frederick one of the worst things i think they did in downtown frederick is after covid ended they took all those restaurants and they pulled this block you know blockades away and said no you got to eat inside again I'm like, it's, it's nice to sit outside you know it just i don't know it's just a different sense of you know i think that's why we all like to have picnics and things like that it just brings a different Okay, all right. Yeah, we're developing menus, and she's developing drink menus. We have the heaters getting ready for fall, so it's going to be a nice ambience. Jed, let's not rush fall yet, okay? That means i got to go back to teaching. I just got done. All right, share with our listeners, one of you, all of you, I don't care who it is, website, (laughs) social media handles, and the days and hours of operation and how we would get a reservation. I just threw a lot at you, didn't you I? You did, but I have. Uh, it's okay. got it all. So our website is seahousein.com. Uh, we are on Facebook as well as Instagram, and we have a little TikTok going yes. on. <laughs> Mark does ours. So, is that right? Well, you actually, know, we the 13-year-old have, does, and then yeah. I post them. Sometimes yeah. I, I work yeah. on that and ask <laughs> kids oh, to do I that as yeah. well. Um, our hours of operation... Uh, will be extending, which we're super excited about, oh, with good. the new menu coming up. Um, right now we're open Tuesday through Thursday, uh, 11 to 7, Friday and Saturday, 11 to 8, and Sunday is 11 to 5. Um, but again, like I said, we will be extending, you know, which is the exciting Monday. for us. And we are Always closed on Monday, Monday. that's right. You'd have mm-hmm. to be closed you still Monday. get a quality of Just life, though. I mean, up. like... The restaurant business is very daunting, and that's part of the reason I got out of it, because I love interacting with people, but, man, it's it's exhausting. You know, I, I get it. You're, you're in much earlier. You're staying much later. People don't understand. It's not we open the doors and we're ready to rock. No, it's yeah. we, we got to be here early and <laughs> do the ordering. And, uh, yeah. 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 So. As, as far as reservations, I, don't, I didn't oh, answer your question about oh, we uh, – no, I just didn't want to miss it because it's an important one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, we're always all about phone calls, right? You know, as far as you can give us a call, Teresa, we can you know, schedule and people do requests for their favorite tables. And um, so we can do it that way. We're also, I have been on an open table for many years. We are transitioning um, to a new system soon. So, again, that will be on our website. Yeah, yeah. So we can. I'm learning, um, I'm learning the new system yeah. as we speak. So. You have to have both now, unfortunately. You'll catch up. Yeah. This has Good. been an amazing interview. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for making the time for us. Uh, each of you fills your role perfectly as we went around, including the owner. Uh, each of you fills your roles just so perfectly, and, and uh, I'm looking forward to coming back out. And yeah. I, I know Terry is too, to, yes. to eating here. I'm looking bring... forward to our backstage tour. Yeah. Those are like one of my favorite things about going into places that kind of go where the customers <laughs> normally don't go. Thank you all for joining us and telling and, us all things Carriage House. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I know your parents are going to love it. Yeah, they will. I think this podcast could have gone on forever. There is just so much to learn about the Carriage House Inn, the history, and all the things that they do up there in Emmitsburg. Their website, though, is seahouseinn.com, and their address, 200 South Seton Avenue in Emmitsburg. Their phone number, 301 447 2366 and you better make sure you get some reservations when you want to go there because they are busy uh their hours and days of operation they're closed on monday tuesday through thursday 11 a.m to 7 p.m friday and saturday 11 to 8 p.m in the dining room only and then friday and saturday from 11 to 9 p.m in the bar Sundays 11 to 5. You can find them on Facebook at Carriage House Inn and on Twitter at C House Inn. Follow and connect with us here on the Steeples and Peoples podcast by checking out our website, steeplesandpeoples.com. You can also listen to us on the Listen Frederick app, sponsored by Manning Media. Uh, on our website, there's pictures, all our episodes, and 
please go on and check out our gear get that word out by buying a t-shirt or a sweatshirt or hoodie which we'll have coming out in the fall uh, like our facebook page at steepers steeples amber sand peoples join the conversation on twitter and reach out to us on snapchat both of those are steeples peoples you can also follow us on instagram and watch our tiktoks at steeples and peoples feel free to let us know if you have any comments questions suggestions for future guests even suggestions for the show by emailing us at steeples and peoples at gmail.com thanks to steve medley for doing our voice intro and outro don't forget to like subscribe and follow us to find out what's going on in all things frederick county maryland and join our facebook group to enter our weekly giveaways at steeples and peoples